Hello, this is Money in Motion video blog, and this is a special edition specifically on Gilead. This is Dan Perkins reporting. Uh, you may have seen the news over the last few days uh, and some increased volatility in the price of Gilead stock. And I thought uh, it was such it's an important part of all of our portfolios, mine included, that I needed to spend a few moments talking about it. Uh, what caused this most recent decline was um, Congressman Waxman sent a letter to the Gilead president, John Martin, um, protesting the price of the treatment of uh, their new hepatitis C drug. And uh, whenever Congress sticks their nose into something, um, it's probably not a uh, positive thing, at least on a near-term basis. Um, the stock sold off a little bit, uh, now closed today on Monday above 72. At one time it got close to 73 today. Uh, that's um, off its high, but uh, I think the reaction that came out today uh, by a bunch of analysts was extremely important. Um, so let's, let's just take a look at a couple of issues and uh, then I'll give you my thoughts about what's going on with the stock. Um, Congressman Waxman said that he thought that the price of $84,000 was, to quote him, outrageous. Um, and yet, the more traditional treatment for hepatitis C cost about $70,000. A course of treatment takes a year, and they get about a 55% effective cure rate with very significant side effects. And on the other hand, the Gilead drug is about $84,000 for a course of treatment, which is about eight to 12 weeks, has a 95 to 100% cure rate with minimal side effects. So on the surface, the difference between the two, 70 and, and 84, doesn't seem like a big difference. But uh, one analyst reported today, let's look, look behind the numbers. Uh, his analysis showed that of the 55% that are cured by the traditional hepatitis C, um, have other problems as relate to the treatment. The 45% versus uh, uh, 50 or almost 100% of the differential with the Gilead drug have no side effects. But what happens to the 45% under the traditional drug therapy that don't have a successful outcome? Um, they can start the therapy all over again for another $70,000 or they're gonna wind up going on a liver transplant list. And according to this article today, the average cost of a liver transplant is close to a million dollars. So when you think about it, if Gilead is $84,000 for a cure, and the other drug is $70,000, and it's effective 55% of the time and 45% of the time, it could lead to million dollar outcomes for kidney transplants, or liver transplants, excuse me, if we can get, if we can find enough livers. So um, I don't know whether uh, Waxman was posturing or, or what, what his motivation was, but clearly uh, the people who have hepatitis C are taking the drug. Um, there's a tracking service that I have that shows me the number of prescriptions written on a weekly basis for this hepatitis C drug. And they are on track to probably write a billion and a half dollars worth of business in the first quarter of this year. That means we're looking at potentially a six to six and a half billion dollar drug in the first full year of implementation. Is that significant? Yes, because it's never happened before. There has never been a drug that has produced that kind of an outcome. So while Mr. Waxman may be concerned about the price, the people who have hepatitis C are demanding the drug. Now, we're gonna go through this dance with, will Medicaid pay, will Medicaid pay, um, will the private insurance pay? The reality is the patients who have hepatitis C, and there are about at least six strains, and this drug is anywhere from 85 to 100% effective, excuse me, depending upon the nature of the hepatitis C. People want the drug. Um, there are tens of millions of people on a worldwide basis who are clamoring for this drug because it's going to 
give them relief, peace of mind, and it's going to cure them. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that Gilead is gouging people because they're charging $84,000 for their treatment because the company is clearly not gouging because in one of the countries in the Middle East that has one of the highest incidence of hepatitis C, they discounted the drug 99% for the people of Egypt uh, to try and help save. But even at that, it's still um, $90, $900. Uh, discounts range from as low as 55% to maybe 75 or 80 percent in uh, some other countries. So I don't think that Gilead is is trying to gouge people in the United States. Uh, there is no public policy, for example, uh, on Medicare or Medicaid about what is the price to pay for prescriptions. We do not have, like other countries have, the government in a prescription drug buying program. Um, so I, I think that the the empirical evidence of the success of this drug at curing hepatitis C is in fact beyond dispute now. And so what we're going to have is we have a drug that tens of millions of people can save their lives and improve the quality of life with this drug. Um, I have been talking to some of you today who were concerned about the, the price drop and I say to them and I say to you the same question that I've asked been asked and answered the same way uh, all through this process. Um, at what point are we going to sell Gilead? I don't know. At what point is Gilead fair valued? Again, I don't know. Some analysts are predicting that the hepatitis C drug marketplace could be $15 billion in sales by 2015. That, that John Martin, who refused to project what the sales would be for this year uh, in his fourth quarter conference call and his forecast for 2014 uh, was, was candid in saying we just don't know how big this drug's going to be. We know it's going to be big and we can't really forecast. So the current forecast is somewhere between four and a half and six and a half billion dollars in sales this year. Um, X that drug, the hepatitis C drug, Gilead expected sales of 11 billion. So we're talking about almost a 50% increase uh, in sales for 2014. Some analysts are projecting that Gilead could do as much as nine to $11 billion in 2015 in this drug. So my original answer to the question, um, what are we gonna do with Gilead? And my answer still remains the same. Um, I believe that they obviously have a cure for a major disease around the world that affects tens of millions of people. And in eight weeks to 12 weeks, if they can cure a disease that a person has had for a substantial period of time and has failed in other drugs, what's the company worth? I don't know, except I know this. It's worth more than what it's selling for today. Merrill Lynch has a price target of 118. So we're almost 100% based on Merrill's target, 100% to go to get to the target, not fair value, the target price over the next 12 months. If we saw another drip below 70, I will tell you, and I'll give you a fair warning, um, I might very well add some more to the position. So Gilead is a stock that it's core, it's done a wonderful job for us. I don't think the run is anywhere from near over and I'm holding on to the position. So that's it for this special report on Gilead. Uh, I will post on the, on the blog some uh, references where you can go and read some of the research reports if you want to, um, so you can get a, a broader perspective of what, in the, what the analysts are saying about the opportunity in Gilead. So that's it for now. If you have questions, please feel free to give me a call. This is Dan Perkinson. Thanks for watching.